welcome to Assembly. My name's Lisa and it's great to be speaking with you today. Well, I hope that you've set up, settled into your new class after this summer. And hopefully this year we will get to see you face to face. But for now, we are back online and we're excited about our Assembly today. Today, we are going to be speaking about being an effective contributor. Now, I know that you've heard that word in school before. So what is an effective contributor? Well, an effective contributor is someone who successfully gives something to a situation. So we're going to be speaking a little bit more about that today. But before we do anything else, Madison is going to come and she's got a game for you. So, so sit back and enjoy. Hey, I'm Madison and I have a game for you today. So the game today is about spot the difference. Who loves a spot the difference in a puzzle book? It's one of my favourite things. So today I've got three pictures for you. I've got two at the beginning of assembly and one at the end and we're going to spot 10 differences in each picture. So here we go, I'm going to give you 60 seconds per picture to spot 10 differences. Let's see how you do. Okay, so here we go, round one of spot the difference. Now there's 10 differences on this page and you've got to spot the difference between the two pictures. So have a good scan of the pictures. You're going to see lots of different differences. So have a look at the fruit bowl, have a look at the glasses, have a look at the window, the people in the picture. There's lots and lots of differences. Let's see if you can pick all 10 out in round one. Are you enjoying the music? Quite funky. I'm liking the music myself. Okay, so we're about halfway there. I wonder if you've maybe got five differences, or maybe you've got six. Maybe you've got all ten, and you're just sitting back. Oh, here we go. How many did you find? Did you find all ten? So we've got one around the sun. We've got one at the window. We've got one about the curtains some of the glasses, got some of the fruit, got some of the icicle and here we are onto round two. So round two we've got a monkey scene. We've got a girl taking photos of the monkey and oh this one is difficult. Oh my goodness. There's another ten differences in this picture. Let's see how we got on. We've still got that funky music playing. I wonder how many people's given up. Have you got all 10 yet? We're about halfway through this picture as well. How are you getting on in round two? Oh, this is difficult. seconds left. Have you got all 10? How many did you find? Oh, this was so difficult. So we've got a leaf missing, we've got a branch missing, we've got the girl's ponytail different, we've got our bag different, he's missing a tooth, that monkey. Oh my goodness, there's so many differences. Well done, that was a great job in our game today. And we're going to play it one more time at the end, so stick with me. But first, we are going to watch the story of Cain and Abel. So here we go, watch the screen. Stories of the Bible, Cain and Abel's offering. This is Adam. Hi. And this is Eve. Hi. They were the first man and woman that God created. Adam and Eve had two sons. The first son was named Cain, and their second son was Abel. When Cain and Abel grew up, Abel became a shepherd. Come on, sheep! While Cain became a farmer. Da, 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 da. When it was time for the harvest, Cain and Abel both brought gifts to God. Cain gathered some of the fruit of the ground and gave it to God. Here you go. God wasn't pleased with Cain and his gift, and this made Cain upset. <sighs> God asked, why are you so angry? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? 
God warned Cain about sin. God told Cain to be careful to not let sin control him, but instead to take control of sin. Wow. Abel also gave a gift to God. Here you go. Abel gave God the best part of his firstborn sheep from his flock. God was very pleased with Abel and his gift because he had given the best of what he had. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that Bible story. You know, Cain and Abel were the sons of Adam and Eve, the first man and woman in the Bible. And you know, Cain and Abel there were given a task from God. One of them was an effective contributor. A Abel brought a great gift and a gift that God was pleased with. But you know, Cain, well, God wasn't so pleased with his gift and he didn't bring his best. And you know, it's so important that we bring our best, that we do what we can. And today we're going to look at three things that we can do to help to make us effective contributors in our school, in our family, in our community, wherever we're at. So can you guess what the three things are? Well, rather than you guessing, let me hand over to Madison and she is going to tell us about the first thing that you can do to be an effective contributor. So the first way we can be effective contributors is to give the tasks that we do the time that they need to complete them well. And so who has ever been doing some work at school and they've just wanted to get it done? They've just wanted to rush through it because they are wanting to go on and do the next thing, something more fun. And then we've got other people who just take their time, might take a wee bit longer, but do a really good job. And they don't have to go back and do it all over again when the teacher goes, mm, I think this needs a bit of work. Well, that was the same way as Cain and Abel. So in our story, Cain was the one who rushed. He just picked up whatever fruit he could, didn't really look at it. He might have picked up the really bruised apples or the really brown bananas and he gave that as an offering and it wasn't his best. He could have done better. But Abel, he took his time. It might have taken longer than Cain, but he went through the animals one by one and picked the best, his favourites, and he gave them as an offering to God. He took his time and he completed the job well. And he was a really effective contributor. So that's our first one. We can give our time to complete the task well. Okay, so the first thing we're encouraging you to do is time. The second thing is to concentrate. To be an effective contributor, we need to concentrate on a task. Now let me take you to today in school. How has your concentration been when you came in this morning and you were asked to do the first job? Were you like concentrating and reading everything and working it through? Or were you like, oh, what have you been up to? What did you do last night? Oh, I need to go and speak to my friend. You know, at times it can be so difficult to concentrate, can't it? I know what I'm like. Sometimes when I need to just get my head down and read my book or answer the question, sometimes I can be a little distracted. That's what happens when we're not concentrating but you know Abel in our story he was someone who concentrated on the task the task was to bring his best to God the best sheep he concentrated on the sheep he looked to see who had black marks who had spots he didn't take them he wanted the ones that were completely white who were spotless and he brought them to God Cain, he wasn't so up for the concentrating. He was a little bit more distracted. Oh, I'll take this one and this one, and what am I going to do tomorrow? Oh, I'll take that one and that one. Do you know, when we concentrate, we can do a task well. When we concentrate, we contribute well. So I want to encourage you, whatever you're doing at school, the different tasks, for that time, concentrate as much as you can. When you find yourself being distracted, stop and think, no, no, I need to do this before I go and do anything else. So the third way we can be an effective contributor is to desire something. To desire something is to want to do it. And so when we was playing our game earlier, the spot the difference game, some of you, that might be your favorite game and you really desired to pick all of the um, differences, to get all 10, some of you might have lost the desire halfway through and thought, well, I never got them all the last time, so I don't want to do the second one. You might have lost your desire to do it. And when we look at our story today, we had Cain and Abel, didn't we? Abel desired to pick the best animals and to put in the time and to offer all of the animals that he'd picked to God. For Cain, 
he did not really desire to please God at all. He just wanted to get on with the rest of his day. So that is our third thing that can help us to be an effective contributor. So the three ways that we're encouraging you to be an effective contributor is to give your time, to concentrate, and to have a desire to finish the task that you've been asked to do. You know, when I was thinking about effective contributors, I started thinking about inventors from Scotland. Do you know there are so many inventors that came from our country here in Scotland? And I want to talk about one briefly today. And this guy, he was born in 1888 in Helensburg in Scotland. And his name is John Logie Baird. Do you know what he invented? Well, I am going to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you just yet. John Logie Baird was an effective contributor. And believe it or not, we all benefit from his invention. You know, he started off life in school like you. It was before World War I. And when he was in school, believe it or not, he actually designed a telephone system between his house and another house. How amazing is that? He took the time, he had the concentration, and he had the desire to make this connection work between house to house. I don't know about you, but I've never managed to do that yet. And we have far more technology today than John had back then. You know, John was someone who kept on being an effective contributor. He kept trying hard at school. You know, once John finished his primary education, his secondary education, he went on to technical college. But because of World War I, he didn't get to finish. And you know, as time went on, he found himself in London. And you know, what's really interesting here is that he didn't have loads of money. It says that John was living in near poverty at that time, and yet he didn't give up. He didn't lose his concentration. He didn't lose his desire to invent. He kept working hard. And you know, in 1925, he invented the television. You know what a television is? We, of course, call it a TV. Most of us now are looking at screens, the iPads, the screens that you're looking at in school today. John Logie Beard was the first inventor of that. And in 1925, in London, in Selfridges, in Oxford Street, he gave his demonstration. Do you know, he put in the time to make that happen. He kept on concentrating. It didn't just happen just like that. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of hours. It took a lot of years to develop that. But he didn't give up. Why? Because he had a desire to invent something. Do you know, we can all be an effective contributors. I know we're not going to be inventing the television because that's already been done. But there's so many more things that haven't been invented yet. There's so many more things that haven't been done yet. And you can be part of inventing new things for the future. So I want to encourage you today that this year, whatever primary you find yourself in, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, to be an effective contributor, to give your time to whatever task you are given, to concentrate really hard and not to be distracted. And of course, to have a desire to do every task well, so that you are contributing, you are giving something as you are finishing the different activities and the different tasks that you're given. Boys and girls, you are able to be an effective contributor and I hope this year that you will give your very best. We have, of course, like we said, another game for you. So we're now back for our third spot the difference. Now, do you think we could all be an effective contributor this time? We could all look at the screen, all try and find something. So let's have your time for one minute. Let's concentrate just for one minute and see if you have the desire to find all 10 things. Here we go. So here we are on Spot the Difference round three. This time we've got a swimming pool scene. Oh, it looks lovely. I wonder if you can find all 10 differences in this picture. We've got trees, we've got a bird, we've got the chair, a ball, we've got the people in the water. How many differences can you find? I think it must be a wee bit easier now that you've done it for a third time. Let's see how many you can get. We're about halfway there. How are you getting on? Oh, not long left. I hope you've got all ten. Wow. 
well done, you've done so well in this one. How many did you find? Oh, okay, so we've got the trees, we've got the bird, we've got the chair, we've got the ball, we've got the ladder, we've got the goggles on the girl's head, we've got the cost swimming costume on the boy. Oh, you've done so well there. Well, well done, that was the third Spot the Difference if you've got all 10 and all three of them, that is 30 differences you've spotted, well done. Well, we have loved being with you for assembly again this month and we'll be back again next month with another one. But for this month, let's see how you can be effective contributors in your classrooms, at your houses, wherever you might be. And why not even let us know about it? You can email kids at aogcentral.co.uk and let us know all about how you've been an effective contributor this month. Well, we'll see you next time. Bye.